general power washing. Um, in case some of you don't know, I'm, I'm Josh uh, from Southern Clean Pressure Wash out of Kansas City. And uh, th this is pretty just pretty basically just as you get into it, it kind of explains what kind of equipment that you're going to need and pretty much tell you what steps to take when house washing. So <clears throat> if you want to switch to the next slide there, Michael. Sure will. Okay, as you can see, this is just a uh, quick list of just some of the minimal requirements that you need for uh, house washing. Uh, like it states here is uh, 3,000 PSI, 4 gallon per minute. Uh, we recommend a belt driven uh, pressure washer. It kind of helps you suck water through your uh, buffer tank. Uh, if you happen to not have one of those, you can always go with the direct drive. That will also work. You just may have problems in the long run. Uh, sucking water from a buffer tank. Also, uh, looks like I just lost Josh. Okay. Um. Anyway, he'll 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 get back in. When he does, I'll I'll let him step back in there, <clears throat> just to keep the conversation going and moving forward. The the difference and one of the things that for me that I know the difference between a belt drive and direct drive is a belt drive generally is gear different, and it's gonna it's gonna spin your pump at a different speed, so your pump will last longer. And that usually the direct drives don't do that if they're direct drive, but if they got a gear in them, they'll, they, they help slow down the, the pump speed, but still not as good as having a belt drive. And then obviously it looks like you need a hundred foot of garden hose. The only thing I would add to that is you might have extra garden hose, maybe another hundred foot, because if you got a guy on the ground, you might have him doing some stuff while you're putting on your house wash and whatnot. Uh, and then 200 foot uh, pressure hose. And Josh just texted me that he think he dropped, and I told him to try to log back in. <clears throat> and then brushes, brushes for uh, the extensions and and getting to the gutters. And and uh, I'm not sure what a whitting area is. I'm not that familiar with house washing. I know a little bit about it, um, and that's why I had Josh hosting this tonight. So uh, that's the brushes and stuff. So at that point, I'm going to stop real quick and see if there's any questions or if anybody wants to raise their hand, they can. I give it, uh, you know, a real quick stop there, and then I'll jump to the next one. Okay. All right. No questions on that page, so we're going to jump to the go to the next page. Uh, Josh's method for applying chemicals and stuff uh, to the house wash is to use a an X jet. I know. And there's, you can also use a downstream injector as well. Uh, that's what he likes to use. He mixes a soap in a soap bucket. And the, he, his cleaning detergent is a liquid chlorine. Um, I've had experience using powder bleach in the past, and I highly recommend not using powder bleach. Uh, the, the downside of using powder bleach is, it's, is, is it will leave a white residue. The, it's a calcium in it comes out when it dries. And it'll turn everything white. Now, if you do run into this or experience it, the one way to get it off is to use uh, an acidic product. It'll react with the calcium and it'll pull it off. Off, but you want to be careful when you're removing it to watch out for window seals or aluminum, because the the acid will eat into that and it it could have some negative impact on it. Liquid chlorine rinse is good. Uh, put a soap at it to make your mix. And it's, it's readily available in most areas. The pricing is going to vary from area to area. Uh, but I think for the most part, you'll find that, that uh, you can get chlorine. And generally, the, most contractors are using 12% chlorine. And then you need a five-gallon bucket. You want an assortment of spray tips. The reason you want an assortment of spray tips is so that you can 
do wide angle sprays for applying chemical or put in your zero nozzles to get your your distance looks like Josh has just jumped back on so as soon as his mic's up I'll uh, I'll let him take back over <clears throat> um, but anyway you got your spray tips all right he's available so let me go all right Josh you back at it yeah yeah I, I apologize guys if it's not the microphone it's the internet I'm guessing <laughs> all right well I went to the second right, phase you? there okay so we're we're just on the uh, chemical injector yeah well I hit the chemical injector uh, clean detergents and the use of liquid chlorine and then I talked about powder bleach because I've had experience with that in the past you really don't want to use that and then of course having a five gallon bucket okay. bucket to blend and I just started on spray tips so if you want to talk about the use and need for different types of spray tips there you go okay um well I, actually as you know Michael uh, I'm just kinda getting into the <laughs> whole using different yes. spray tips I thought when I first started out <clears throat> We had to use just the uh, white tip, and that was it. So uh, there are some uh, different types of tips that you can use. Um, now, if if I'm wrong on any of this, Michael, you can kind of correct me. Yeah, because I'm I not, sure will. Uh, that great with it, but <clears throat> I I know the ones that I just recently ordered are like a uh, zero 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 four zero, I believe. Uh, these work great for uh, soaping at a. Uh, a two-story home, uh, mm -hmm. I can reach up to around 40 foot. I would say it may go a little higher than that. I haven't actually, you know, tried to measure this out. <laughs> and then uh, I personally just use uh, for low rents. I just use the uh, black tip that comes with the uh, regular soap nozzle. Um, I don't know what that, other ones that they have available, just because I'm kind of getting new into that. Right, and usually those soap, uh, those black soap tips are about a 20. To a 25 size nozzle, mm -hmm. right? And and real quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a word document over here so I can type some things so people can see. The first two it. numbers on a nozzle, that's the degree. And then your second two num numbers would be like the size. Like you just said, you got a zero zero forty. That would be your size. And if there happens to be a third number there, that would be like a half size. And mm -hmm. you're, you're never going to, well, in our industry, you won't see a half size that large. So if I had a, a zero, zero, uh, zero, five point five, that would be a 5.5 .5 nozzle, zero degree. <clears throat> if that makes sense to everybody. And then, of course, if the, the degree changed, this would be like a, a 15. So that's not a, that's a common size you see. But most of the time, there won't be a point in there. And it can be confusing to those that see it. So right. um, anyway, I'll take that back off and let you continue. I just wanted to clarify that real quick. And, and I'm okay with, uh, I mean, you know, some of you guys may already know me. I've only been in business for around a year. So uh, if there's any questions that you have, I, I don't have a problem with maybe, you know, if somebody has a question or want to add something to it, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and start on the uh, spray wands. Uh, they have different sizes. Um, I know when I first started, I went with a, uh, I believe it's three foot, and uh, they all they have some longer ones too. <clears throat> Got my tape measure here so I can look at it. I also have one that uh, kind of helps me out. Uh, I'm a shorter guy, so I don't know how high or how tall most of you guys are. But uh, when I first started out, trying to soap up on a two story house was extremely hard for me because I'm only about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and it seemed like I wasn't able to quite reach us. some of these uh, two-story homes that uh, seem to have a little bit higher peaks than other. So uh, I ended up ordering a, uh, I think it's five foot maybe, it's a five foot wand. Uh, that seems to help me out with that extra reach, so I definitely recommend something like that for any of you shorter guys. Um, I, I know they come in different, uh, different sizes as lengthwise other than that. Uh, those are just the two that I actually have, and I get by fairly well in the residential washing. Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, we got a few questions on this slide right oh. here, Josh. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. The first one in is the water hose ID. And <coughs> let me uh, unmute Judd because he asked that. And 
Judd, are you talking about the water hose ID going to your machine or the, the, the or going away from the machine? Yeah, uh, on that first slide, you were talking about you need 100 foot of water hose, and I think it's critical that they use that people get the right size water hose to feed your machine. Right. You know, and, if, if, if you get too small, you're going to starve your machine because there's different di inside diameters. Yep. And obviously, obviously, the bigger diameter you can get, the better. Yep, I agree. Um, I generally try to go for a three quarter inch, which is about usually the biggest you can get. And right. Um, there's half inch and five eighths, but I stay away from those, and I always get the commercial grade if if it's available. Right. Uh, next question we got here, Josh, is um, where can you get twelve percent? I can only get ten percent. Uh, I, you know, I, I've actually that, that's something I may be actually to uh, handle here on a question. <laughs> um, <laughs> when, when I first started, um, I went to pool stores. This is where I found out that you can get it from. Now, some pool stores uh, in my area was only carrying a ten percent. Um, I actually uh, found out who they were getting their their supplies from, and I gave them a call. Now, um, they won't deal directly with me because I'm not a pool supplier is what they told me, but uh, they will now ship 12% to them. So you might want to check into that, find oh. out who's supplying them, and then they can possibly ship it to that store. And in some cases, I've heard, I've talked to another guy that does uh, some residential uh, work in my area. He doesn't do a lot, but he told me that he gets his 12%, uh, I guess, shipped directly to one of his uh, warehouses or something like that. So... You, you could definitely talk to them, and they may be able to help you with that. Right. Now, the question, Josh, is why do you prefer the X-Jet? Hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I I actually really like the X-Jet. I, I started using it uh, because I was having problems with uh, a lot of my downstream injectors. Um, <clears throat> with the chlorine running through them, It there's a little spring inside there. And it was causing it to uh, eat up extremely fast. <clears throat> as soon as I switched to an X jet, it, yes, you have to carry a five gallon bucket around with you, but uh, it it's only a five gallon bucket for so long because you're spraying the chemical out of it. Uh, it it's real easy. You don't have to walk back to your machine to unplug your injector. Uh, if if you're like me, sometimes I don't switch to a uh, different nozzle. I'll only use one nozzle to soap uh, high and low, and then. I'll use that same exact nozzle. So for me sometimes, and, and I know some other guys that I've talked to, you have to walk all the way back to your machine on your trailer in your truck, wherever it's mounted, and you have to disconnect that. So uh, having that X-Jet, you can pretty much have your bucket with you. Uh, you don't have to worry about possibly customers. Uh, I've actually had customers' kids walk over to my five-gallon bucket sitting over by my truck and uh, try to play in it. So it, it's a little safer when you got the bucket with you. You don't have to worry about anybody messing with it, and it, it's quick and easy. There's a shutoff valve right on the line, and also you can just disconnect it just as fast as you could take off any other nozzle and put another nozzle on yourself. I, I hope that answered it. I don't know if I rambled along, but... Yeah, I, and I, I've got another question here they asked us. Uh, in comparison, I think to downstream, Josh, uh, one of the reasons I think the guys use X jets is because you can get a stronger solution to come in through the, through with the X jet than you than you count downstream. But I've I've heard that, different that, ways that, of doing that. it, and I'm I'm kind of playing with some stuff right now to see if we can come up with one that'll bring it in strong enough on the downstream side, so that you don't always have to run uh, the X jet, which makes it a little easier for the operator. Right, and and. And, you know, and, and let me clarify here uh, that when using the X-Jet, I, I normally will not use the X-Jet. I mean, I switch back and forth to both of them. Um, I prefer the X-Jet more when I'm doing something like a, a brick home. Uh, it seems to penetrate a lot better, uh, so hopefully that helps out. Yeah, and a lot of times I'll see guys use the X-Jets like on the roofs and stuff because they get the stronger solution up there and then downstream around mm -hmm. the house because it's a lighter solution. And good suggestion here by Annie was to make sure that you put your uh, feed line into a bucket of water when you're done to clear out your yep. your downstreams and your X-Jets so that all those chemicals yeah. are out and they don't sit there and corrode on it. Cause that's, yeah, uh, definitely. That, yeah, I, I was actually going to go over that. Uh, I was just thinking about that too. That's good. Because definitely the... 
uh, corrosive power of, of the uh, chlorine can eat those up over time. <coughs> yes, I, I had a, a downstreamer that I had ordered uh, brand new, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't rinse it out like he's saying. Uh, it, it's always good to have your your chemical in one bucket, and then when you switch it over, you could actually take that line right out and drop it down into a clean bucket of water. That's so you're kind of cleaning it while you spray, and you still have water there, so it's not sucking air. Uh, I, I started doing that because after ordering like my third or fourth uh, injector and not cleaning them out because I guess I wasn't smart enough to realize this is what was happening. Uh, I, I started doing that because yes, the the chlorine will eat through everything that's inside there, along with your hoses too. Right, and um, we had a question for the house wash detergent. Uh, we're going to get to that, and the dilution ratios on a downstream injector compared to the X jet. Uh, my experience with the downstream injectors, you can get about the best you can get is about twenty to one. And I believe on the X-Jet you can get around 10 to 1 and maybe a little less. I've, I've heard as high as 3 to 1, but I, I haven't tested it to know. Yeah, they um, – I may have uh, – if you want to give me a second, I could probably go and grab the card out of my uh, truck. I have a uh, – uh, the ratio card sitting in my truck for the X-Jet now for the uh, – For the uh, different things to put in there? That's good. Right. Let's, let's just keep the presentation going. Um, okay. But we just know that, that that's a possibility. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, no other questions? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, the, the next part is the uh, safety equipment. Um, th these are just some things that I came off the top of my head that, that I try to use in my everyday uh, residential cleaning. Um, I, I seem to always wear a hat. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I'll tell you a quick story here is um, – my my grandfather uh, pretty much worked outside. I mean, for all of his seventy five years of life, and uh, he he always believed that you shouldn't wear a hat. So he actually ended up getting uh, cancer uh, from the sun, and it, it pretty much ate away the top of his head. So, ever since then, after he got it, he told me you should always wear a hat. So uh, that's why I put that here. I'm a strong believer in in safety, so always wear something to cover your head. Uh, I wear a ball cap. <clears throat> I also uh, I didn't list it here, but I try to keep my uh, the top of my ears and my face and uh, arms uh, with a uh, suntan lotion or sunscreen. I mean, um, it's it's really really critical that you do that because it, you may not be hurt, you know, today or tomorrow or next week, but over the time of 15, 20 years, it can cause a lot of damage. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, gloves. Um, I don't know. I know some of you have already been doing residential washing yourself, but I, I actually just the other day was moving around some uh, SH in the garage uh, without my gloves. I wasn't even following my own rules here. I ended up spilling it on my hand and ended up actually uh, burning my hand just a little bit. So I would recommend using gloves at all times, some type of a chemical resistance glove. Um, they sell them at Lowe's. I know I have a pair. I don't know the name of them, but they're somewhere around four ninety nine to eight ninety nine, somewhere right in that area. Uh, they're not too bad, and, and they even help when you're spraying uh, on the house too. If you don't like to get your hands wet, uh, they pretty much keep out all water and all chemicals. So I would definitely get a pair of those to help your hands out. <clears throat> Safety glasses. You don't want any type of flying debris that the pressure washer may release off your home, hitting in your eye. Um, uh, I would probably suggest if, if you're going to get uh, glasses, um, I know the clear ones, uh, we all work out in the sun, so it, it gets kind of uh, bright. So they have some that are indoor-outdoor that I use. Uh, I can also get those from Lowe's for, I think, about $16. And uh, whether you're in or out, I mean, they, they lighten up and tint, too, so those are definitely good things to get. But you, know, you, you can pretty much use what you want. I know a few guys that actually use uh, goggles. Um, boots, <clears throat> I'd get you some type of a uh, water-resistant boot, um, leather. It, I, I know I've hit myself in the foot before with the wand, and uh, if I didn't wear the the boots, uh, possibly I could have, you know, done some damage. I would not uh, recommend wearing any type of 
uh, open toe shoe like flip flops or sandals. I've seen I've seen many people in videos on YouTube wearing these sandals and stuff like that. And you know I'm I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes I'll get outside and mess with it. But you know the the point is that if you do, it's not it's not a matter of if you hurt yourself. It's when you're going to hurt yourself. So that's pretty much all I had. If anybody had any questions on that, and and it's even uh, <laughs> just the professionalism of having on. You know, the, yeah. the, the workwear that you have makes a big difference. Yes. Yes, it does. All right. And then um, let me see. Oh, yeah, okay. We had a question here about stucco. But, uh, yeah, we're fixing to jump into that. Why don't you – yeah, have you ever cleaned stucco? I'm sure you have. Uh, me? You were talking to me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've 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 cleaned a few uh houses of stucco. Uh mainly what I what I clean around here is a uh, vinyl siding. Uh it seems to be real popular here, but we do have some stucco that I deal with every now and then. Okay. <clears throat> what what was the question or did you want me to answer it after no, this? No, that, that's good. We'll we'll probably get that one's probably a more later question anyway. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh walk the job site with the homeowner. Um <clears throat> Uh, I, I take this time as soon as I, you know, whether I'm called, uh, you know, and, and I've never seen the place or, or whatever it may be. Once you get there, it's it's always important to walk the homeowner, if possible, around the house. And you can point out the areas of need. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I've had calls before and, and the customer tells me, you know, it's just it's just one side of my house that needs to be washed, and I don't think there's any other problems with it. <clears throat> well, my my job as a a salesman or serviceman, whatever you'd like to call me, is to uh, make sure I get the job, and then I want to upsell that job because you know I don't want to ever leave any money on the table. So, walk them around, point them out, and tell them, you know, hey, this is an area that you may want to look at. Um, and and most of the time they they'll pretty much agree with you and they'll they'll go with it. Uh, I get a lot of uh, gutter cleaning up sales. Most people think that it's just the walls that need to be cleaned and nothing else, no soffits, no gutters or anything like that. So walk them around, show them what you what should be cleaned, and uh, you know try to upsell them on anything else, whether it be you know concrete, you know driveway or whatever that is. Agree on a price. And then stick with that price. Don't I? I wouldn't suggest uh, when I first got into it. <clears throat> you know, I, I tell somebody I can do this amount of a uh, house for X amount of dollars. Then you always got what I call the price shoppers, and I'm sure some of you also also call them the same thing or, or cheapskates, wh whatever it is. You know, um, they they seem to not be particularly happy with the price, and they're like, "Well, can you do it for this amount or this amount?" Uh, as soon as you budge on your price, I've noticed that you'll continue budging on your price. Let's say you wanted to do a house for 300. Well, once that person talks you down to 250, the the next guy down the street, he's going to hear word from mouth. And as most of you guys know in in this industry, word of mouth is huge. Um, I uh, I'll go off base here a little bit. Is I I done a uh, word of mouth that that is. Uh, I'd done a deck cleaning a while back, and uh, I, I ended up getting paid, you know, fairly well for it. <clears throat> Before the day was out, I only had one job that day. Before I left that neighborhood, I ended up doing two other decks. So I'd done three decks that day, just from the word of mouth within the few hours that I was at the one place. So make sure you stick to your price. Uh, be fair. I, I wouldn't charge, you know, this neighbor here in a 2,000 square foot home, you know. Three hundred dollars, and then go next door, and then charge him five hundred, and then go down the street and charge him one fifty. Because being inconsistent, uh, it'll catch up to you in the end. So, pick a price, walk them around, try to upsell them, and then stick to that. Stick to your guns, in other words. Uh, look for potential safety hazards too. <laughs> and uh, th this is something that uh, Mike added in too. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what he talked, what he's talking about here is. Um, uh, I, I'll go into a little story here. I, where I'm at, we have a lot of uh, a lot of areas where houses are kind of built up on like a side of a hill. Uh, I've gotten to the back side of houses before, not really noticed that I only have probably like maybe six foot of yard before I drop off onto a, a small cliff. So th these are things you want to look out on. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not walking into something 
you know, while you're spraying. Uh, I always try to check because I've actually fell into uh, potholes or gopher holes, whatever you want to call them in somebody's yard before. Uh, make sure that uh, there's nothing around uh, potted plants. I know I've tripped over some before. I try to move all this stuff out of the area because it's it's definitely a you know safety hazard. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Michael, or no, no. I think uh, yeah, no. That that's good. <clears throat> it's there's obviously my thing yeah, when I'm I'm looking again. at it. Yeah, my thing is when I'm looking at a job site, I just want to imagine what my guys are doing and what I'm going to be doing. And if it looks like there's something I could brush mm -hmm. up against and get cut or I could step off of or, um, you know, you're working from a ladder and you're going to put a ladder into an area where you think it's unsafe, try to, you know, just look for the potential hazard. That's all really safety people are doing anyway. You just want okay. to look for a okay. potential hazard and avoid it. Yeah, I, I know you had added that, so I just wanted to make sure, you know, I, I covered everything. I, I thought I might have knew exactly what you're talking about, so. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and start on uh, preparing your uh, house mixture here. Is, uh, th I, I know some people, you know, it, it varies from person to person. Um, this is just the house uh, wash that I use. I use two gallons of 12% uh, SH. I use uh, three gallons of water and five ounces of fresh wash. I, I put all this into a five-gallon bucket. Uh, I have one that... Uh, Actually, I, I bought it from, from actually PowerWash.com. Uh, it has a little lid on the top of it. Uh, it fits, you know, easily five gallons, and I put it all in there, and I just kind of shake it up with the lid on it and then drop my downstreamer in it or my X-Jet, whatever that may be. <clears throat> um, uh, a after you do this on the job site, uh, you want to, well, while you're walking around, hopefully you've, you've noticed where your water supply is, and then you'd want to run your, uh, your water hose there, uh, as we mentioned earlier. Um, you can bring that back and you hook it into your uh, buffer tank if you have one. If, if you don't have one, of course, you can you know, hook that directly into your machine. The only thing that I would say when you're hooking directly into your machine, and, and I've only had this happen once to me, so I, I don't know if, you know, I've heard some other guys talk about it happening to them quite a bit. But uh, when you want to make sure that you got a uh, the right amount of flow coming out uh, gallons per minute. Uh, sometimes on certain houses, uh, I believe that's just from uh, you know the ones that run off of the uh, the wells. Sometimes they don't have enough uh, water flow, and uh, you can end up you know uh, with some problems with not enough water flow to your pump. Um, <clears throat> of course, if you have a buffer tank, that's not anything to really worry about. And if you're on a city line, you know, you, you normally don't have to do that. But if you wanted to check to make sure you have enough water flow, which, you know, I, I do this sometimes, uh, especially at older houses because I don't know how they do. You can take a, uh, you know, clean five-gallon bucket. You can drop that water hose down in there and then just time it, you know, how long it takes. Uh, five gallons a minute, you know, within the minute it should fill that five-gallon bucket up. But if it does and you're only running a four-gallon-per-minute unit, you, you know you're pretty much good to go, and you can uh, uh, go ahead and hook that up and uh, start your job. Okay. Very, uh, <clears throat> were you done with that page, Josh? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Okay. Got a few good comments here. Um, Judd West was wanted to point out that when, you're, when you have bleach and water, to put your water in first, followed by your bleach, and then your soap last. That way you don't create a lot of suds. And... It's, it's always a good rule of thumb, regardless of what chemicals you're mixing, but to put your water in first, followed by your, your strong chemicals and things like that, like, say, an acid or something. Um, in this case, we're using chlorine, but <clears throat> that way you're, especially with an acid, if you pour water into an acid, you can get a real quick reaction there, uh, and it's okay. splatter and hurt somebody. So you always want to pour the strong solution in last to, a dil to something that's going to dilute it. And then... Uh, okay. John Kutsky had a comment, and I'm not sure I completely understand what he's saying, so I'm, I'm going to unmute him and let him see if he can explain it to you real quick for us, John. Okay. Hey. Hey, John. How you doing? How are you? Doing good. Oh, no, I was, just, I was just saying, like you said, you know, when you walk around the back of the house, you know, don't bump into things or, you know, watch where you're going. One problem I had when I first started doing it was I wouldn't – I have a 150-foot of hose on my trailer, and I wouldn't unwind the whole hose reel, and 
I'd get to the back of the house and I'd realize that I'm pulling on the hose and it's it's stuck on the trailer because I'm like a few feet too short. Right, right. I would say make sure you have enough off of your hose reel or if you need to add more line, hook up another 50-foot hose so that you're not backing your trailer up or, you know, having to run around the other side of the house to have enough line. Yep. Hose yep. management is real important. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> just a quick, quick, quick little thing on that. Uh, I, I know what you're talking about. When when I first started out, I only had a hundred foot of hose, and uh, I would get to a lot of houses. And uh, my unit is on uh, on wheels, so I would just pick it out of the back of my truck and then uh, wheel it around. But before I'd done that, <clears throat> I would go yanking on my hose, and I've actually yanked my pressure washer right off the back of my tailgate before. So. Uh, it's definitely good to carry extra hose. Never, you can never have too little. I mean, too much hose. So. Yep. And we had Judd made a suggestion too about your downstream injector. It's going to work better when your hoses are laid out as well, and that's because downstream injectors. I won't get into the whole mechanics of how they work, but the more restriction you have past the downstream injector, the less likely it's going to draw. The more restriction, the less it draws because it doesn't create the venturi effect that it wants to create and I, I'll leave it at that but just know that um, that can slow down the, the usefulness of your downstream injector all right let's go to the next page there we go okay um, make sure your uh, hose wands are connected uh, your hoses you know um, but I guess I guess what I was trying to say on this, and maybe I didn't word it uh, correctly on this, was uh, the the quick cat, uh, quick connect couplers. Um, I don't know if any of you have had this problem or not. I'm sure you may have. If you don't actually lock them all the way, uh, I've had sometimes where I go to put my tip on, and I push it up, and I don't I don't feel it go all the way up, and then you pull that trigger, it'll actually send that shooting off and same thing with your hoses uh, <clears throat> on each of my uh, uh, pressure hoses I have a, a ball valve it's hooked through a quick connect coupler and then it has you know of course the on and off um, when I go to hook that to my gun uh, I, I've actually not went all the way down on it and turned my ball valve on and had that gun totally shoot off of there so it's it's very important that you make sure every one of your connections are tightly secure before you uh, go sending uh, you know pressurized water through it. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Uh, yeah, we've had in of, when, on the truck washing side, Josh. We've had guys crack windshields, and uh, Robert mm -hmm. Burns just posted that he's blown out uh, windows <laughs> and houses before. I I hit I hit a uh, very <laughs> very expensive window with. Uh, one of my tips uh, one time, and I got lucky that it didn't break it. So I'm I'm a firm, like I, I go through it as soon as I I connect it, I check it, and then I hold it to the ground and I pull it, and then I check it again and I pull it, and then I start working. I just I'm I'm all for double checking. Um, <clears throat> okay, let me see. Uh, once you've turned your water on, of course. Uh, you you kind of want to let it fill the line. Um, I know when I first started. Uh, I figured, hey, I turn the water on and I'll just start my engine. I, I've even started my engine before um, and then went and turned the water on and, and then realized that this isn't the best thing to do. So you, you always want to make sure you have water uh, going to your pump. Uh, never run your pump without water. Um, and always make sure that you have that water coming through your line too. Uh, you can actually remove the tip from the end of your wand and pull the trigger without your engine uh, running, and you can actually, you know, make sure that it has a full flow of water coming through it before you decide. And then always make sure that you don't have any type of debris, uh, debris caught up in the nozzles before you start working with them, uh, or in your line, so it doesn't get clogged on while you're going. <clears throat> you can uh, a after this, uh, after you've checked all of these, uh, you know, little safety things, making sure you have water making sure all your quick connect couplers are connected. Um, you can go ahead and you know also check for leaks too. If you have leaks, um, sometimes you may just need an O-ring uh, put in you know your gun. I know the end of my gun I have a quick connect coupler on it to change out my wands 
every once in a while it's it's leaked and I look in there and sure enough I just need an O-ring. So they're they're quick fits quick fixes that'll uh, help you in the long run. So make sure you keep up on that. Um, okay, after you've uh, you've checked all this, everything's good to go. You're ready to start washing, uh, start your machine up, and uh, I I recommend wetting down any type of uh, vegetation. <clears throat> I've I've had some in the past where uh, I wasn't real sure on wetting it down. No one ever really told me. Uh, I kind of went in and went into it, uh, you know, like blind. And I've actually uh, ruined uh, ruined some plants before. So I always try to wet them down. Um, now, now this is me, and anybody can comment on this as, as they want to. Um, I always try to hit it with a uh, you know a real low pressure, and then once I got a uh, you know a shield on it, in other words, with the water, you can go ahead and start soaping the side of your house and everything like that. And then as you're rinsing off, that's just more water, and, and you're able to rinse that stuff off too. So it's not it's not a huge deal as long as you've uh, you've wet down any vegetation to keep it from dying. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, that's pretty much uh, it. I, oh, I noticed down here. I guess Michael added. Uh, if you have a second man, uh, I'm I'm pretty much the one man show. So you know, I pretty much have to wet down any vegetation on my own, rinse the house, wash the house, pack and load all by myself. But if you have a second guy. Uh, this this would be a great job for him using a, a water hose, and uh, he can keep everything pretty much watered down. I know when you get into roof washing, it's it's definitely a, a big thing to keep stuff washed down. Yeah, having a second guy on the ground helps a lot then. Yep, definitely. And then we had a question. Uh, uh, do you use hot water at all, Josh? <clears throat> um, n no, not, not when I'm doing residential. Um, I, I would if I was doing a uh, driveway or sidewalks, but uh, as for the house itself, I don't. Um, it, yeah, no, no, I yeah. that's my answer. Yeah, and and my experience has been for what I've done with what house washing, uh, which has been years ago. It really didn't make a difference if I had hot water. I always, I, um, right. you know, unless you're getting into clean up oil spots and stuff, it didn't seem to make a big difference. No, no I'll I'll add on that is. Uh, I, I had uh, right now I, I'm running a uh, a cold water uh, unit four gallon per minute because when I got into it, all I said I was going to do is was uh, residential, and then I started getting calls for commercial. So now I'm getting into the hot water you know units. But um, I've rented a hot water unit before, and uh, I had a, a residential job to do, and uh, you can actually, I mean to me on vinyl siding stucco. With the hot water or the cold water, I've got the exact same results when washing a residential home uh, with vinyl siding or or with stucco. So that that's why I say to me it doesn't really matter. But if you're doing concrete or sidewalks or any type of commercial work, yes, I would uh, definitely recommend using hot water. Yeah, and I would agree with that. <clears throat> okay, let's and, see. Uh, <clears throat> oh, go ahead, Michael. And. Um, you know what? I'm going to unmute Judd because he has a comment about why not to use hot water on vinyl siding. Okay. Judd, you're there. Yeah, yeah. I definitely would not use hot water on any residential, excuse me, residential uh, unless it was concrete, uh, mm -hmm. purely because hot water will warp vinyl, and it definitely will swell wood. So, so I, I would say never use hot water on wood or vinyl. Now, if you wanted to use warm water, you make to get by with that. But a good rule of thumb is just stay away from hot water on residential unless you have oils on on concrete. Yep, definitely. Yep, and I've even had uh, years ago when I did it, I had hot water out and I had a hose running across the yard, and it left a nice line of dead grass where my hose was laying. <laughs> So we all live and learn, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's what we're here for—to share with each other our experiences and hopefully make each other better. So, uh, all right. Thank you, Jed. <clears throat> Any other uh, questions there? No, I think that's it. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, this is uh, okay. This is the part of actually soaping here. Okay. Uh, when, once you've got everything set up, you've washed everything. You've, I mean, uh, you've uh, got your water going, your engines going. You've checked all your safety stuff. You got your boots on, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now you're you're pretty much ready to uh, start on on the house itself. Um, 
you, you do want to make sure that you have a downstream injector um, installed. Uh, it wouldn't work very good if you didn't. But uh, or if you're using a uh, XJet, go ahead and uh, just carry that along to whatever side of the house. I'm assuming that uh, you decide to start on, and then you just drop that into the bucket and turn it on, and it pretty much will spray it. Um, <coughs> hang on one second. <coughs> uh, while you're while you're applying your soap. Uh, I've always uh, I, I would always recommend applying your soap from the bottom to top. This I, actually I don't know the whole reason behind this. Uh, what I've been told is when you apply from the bottom to the top, uh, it helps with uh, coverage and it'll help with uh, streaking. Um, if I mean, if you had anything to add to that, Michael, that's just what I've been told. So I've always done that, and I've never had any problem with either of those. So right, it usually has to do with streaking, and a lot of times, I will actually apply from the top down just because I feel like I'm not wasting as much detergent. But if I get into a situation where I'm using a really strong a cleaner, like a, a strong acid or a really strong caustic, I will do it from the bottom up. The reason, if I can explain it here on the line, and it, and it makes sense, is as you get those streaks that run down. The center of that streak as it goes down has is, is got fresh detergent and stuff coming with it. Mm -hmm. And on the outside of that streak, it, it's, it's pushing pollutant out to that edge. And it, right. it kind of cleans and deposits back into itself on that edge. So as you come down across that and hit it and start to fade that away, there's that detergent pollutant has gone deeper into what you're trying to clean. So it ends right. up leaving a streak. So if you put an even finish and you're going from the bottom up, as that comes down from the top, it's already been cleaned and it doesn't have the same effect. Right, right. And I, that's my uh, street logic on how that works. I've never had anybody tell me that, but it's the only thing that actually makes sense in my mind. So Yeah, um, that, that's, that's what I've always been told. And, and I, I've actually done some small uh, little testing on stuff. And I've applied from the top and bottom on you know old abandoned you know areas, and and I've actually seen streak marks before. So I just live by apply from the bottom to the top. So, <clears throat> but uh yeah once once you once you start applying your soap, um, you want to make sure you give it enough little dwell time so that it does uh, so the solution can kill any mold or mildew that may be on the house. Um, I know when I'm applying my soap and I'm starting from the bottom to the top, like I've said, um, I, I will pretty much start uh, not stop applying my soap until I start to see the uh, the mold or mildew starting to remove its itself from the pressure of the soap. Once it starts to do that, I shut down my uh, my soaping. I'll walk back to my truck if I'm using a uh, a downstream injector, and then I'll shut that off. And then I'll come back and uh, go ahead and start my rinse cycle. If you have an X jet, of course, you can pretty much just turn it off, pull that X jet tip out, and then you can go to with your uh, rinsing tip uh, for high and low, depending on whichever one you're. I'm assuming you'd be rinsing from top to bottom afterwards. <clears throat> um, let's see. You you also want to make sure when you're rinsing. Uh, I know in the past when I first got into it, you know. You sit there and you spray it off, and you think, okay, I've, I've got everything here. And then you go around to the other side, and at the end of the day, when you're done, or within the hour or two hours, whatever it took you to wash the house, you come back around to the back side, and you'll actually have, uh, I call them yellow streaks. Uh, they're they're kind of a whitish yellow. It almost looks like someone might have had like a little bit of dried milk left on your windows. And th this, to me, comes from uh, not rinsing your uh, surface properly. Or not r rinsing it enough, so I've actually had to go back and rinse a rinse the backside of a house because I didn't rinse it good enough. So always make sure after you apply, you've cleaned the area, that you you rinse it and you rinse it very well. Um, if you don't see any more soap coming uh, off of the house while you're rinsing, you know you're pretty much uh, good to go. <clears throat> um, let me see. There are some areas on the house that uh, that I've ran into that that the mildew or mold will will still be there after you've applied the soap. Uh, all you have to do uh, in most cases is 
reapply. Uh, just go back with the other steps. Reapply the soap and let it dwell a little bit longer, and it, it will remove it uh, using a soft wash, soft wash method. Um, if there are some areas that may not, uh, you can use a, a, a soft bristle, bristle brush uh, to help remove this. Um, most of the brush uh, work that I do is just on gutters. Um, I've never really had a problem with not being able to remove mold or mildew while using uh, just my regular house wash mixture. On uh, Normally the first try, it, it always comes off. Uh, every once in a while I've had to apply just a little bit more and let it sit a little longer for some of the heavier areas, but uh, it all comes off nice and easy, and uh, make sure you rinse. Um, that's pretty much it on that. Okay. Uh, questions are, <clears throat> On commercial brick buildings, would there be a difference in hot water and cold water? Uh, I I don't do many. I mean, most of the commercial that I've done has always been flat uh, flat work. Um, but I, I would I would say if it's a brick building, um, I, I don't I don't see a problem with using the uh, hot water. Uh, I know I've I've used uh, hot water before on uh, mold and mildew without soap um, on, on like uh, stone walls, but uh, I, I'm just not experienced enough in in brick buildings for uh, commercial wise. Okay, all right. Um, I'm waiting for uh, Alex Curry had a comment, and he's gonna he's actually going to call in and I'll I'll add him in here when he gets gets in on the call. Um okay. Let me see Robert Burns. I'm not sure if I answered his question or not. Let me see, I think we did, but uh if I'm not. Robert, are you able to Ooh, All right, sorry Whoa. about that. <laughs> yeah. I unmuted Robert's uh microphone and that was loud. Uh hopefully we answered his question regarding streaking. Um we talked about putting a full thing of soap across there. Right. Robert Coffee, is there anything you wanted to add to what we did about streaking? You you mentioned something about putting a full sheet of soap on to fill the gaps. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> He must not have been prepared for that question. Yeah, no, and I kind of caught him off guard. He wasn't ready. That's no big deal. Um, and then to avoid streaks, uh, Patrick Fian said that he brings a uh, a bottle of uh, Windex to to address the streaks afterwards. And I, then I've um, never heard of that before. Yeah, and then Judd <clears throat> Judd West made a really good point. Uh, this even happens to me with fleet washing. If, if you got a surface that's being hit by direct sunlight. It gets really hot, and mm -hmm. the mist and stuff that hits it or a quick spray on it, it'll flash dry it, and it'll yep. be real hard to get that soap off there later. So you may want to mm -hmm. go through and wet down the surfaces before you start cleaning. It's it, What you want to do is when you wet it down is get just enough of a mist on there to cool it uh, mm -hmm. because you want your soap to be able to penetrate and clean the surface, and if you fill it with water, your soap is going to be diluted more when you hit the surface. So that's the way I've always yep. looked at it. I want just enough to cool it, not so much to saturate it. And um, All right. <clears throat> I'm going just, to uh, just, just to go back just a second, as, uh, when you said that, it, it made me uh, think about um, uh, residential's uh, customers' cars. Uh, yep. When they're in the driveway, try to make sure they can either put them in the garage or move them to the street or at least move them back away from the house because there's been some times where I've gone in there and I think they're far enough back so I don't worry about it. And then you start and then the uh, mist itself with the house wash gets on their car and it, it'll leave little yellow dry spots all over it. And then you end up having to wash their car afterwards. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Judd, did you have anything to add to what I just said, Judd West? He may have left us. Okay. Um, Alex Curry's on, and he wanted to comment on the temperature. Okay. And, and your chemicals. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I, can you hear me? Michael? Yeah, we can hear you, Alex. Go ahead. Yep. We got okay. You. Spectacular. Um, just a little background. I, I've been pressure washed for years, and so I, I, I try to 
support in any any way possible. Um, and and everything's super super good as far as the material that's come across. But I would like just to put it out there that you can uh, use hot water on vinyl. Um, I've been using hot water on vinyl for three years. Um, it, as long as you're able to control to control your temperature settings and keep it at low enough between 60 and 70 degrees, which is just enough to heat and activate the chemical to where it works a lot better. Um, some people say, well, it's not going to make that much difference. It's not going to make that much difference, but it makes the chemical work a ton faster. So okay. uh, if, if you're thinking about having hot water or adding it for residential, definitely you know, make the investment because then you have it for the concrete as well. But right, um, I just right. wanted to toss that out with the with. The but as long as it's sorry. controlled, right? As long as you can control the temperature. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. If you can't, con if you cannot control the temperature of that's coming across from your hot water unit, absolutely 100%. Do not use it on vinyl. But if okay. you can set it anywhere between 50 and 70, 50 and 80 degrees, have at it. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. Good point. Good yeah, point, absolutely. Alex. Yeah, anytime you can add heat to your detergent and your cleaning solution, it's always going to work better. So I, I'm glad you brought that up. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And question here is, do you see a foamer making a difference? Um, I've kind of debated on this, and I know there's been some guys that have tried it out there. Myself, and Josh, you can chime in with your thoughts, but I I would be scared to use a, foam, a foamer to put to apply um, – a bleach solution because it just those bubbles and stuff are going to carry they get caught in the wind and I, I just see that creating an issue now the obviously the idea for doing it is you could get better coverage you could get longer dwell time but I, I would really I, I think I would advise to stay away from using foamers for that reason that's uh, I I've actually never used a, a foamer but uh you know t speaking about coverage uh, that's another reason for the X jet if you've ever used an X jet uh, I don't know, it, for some reason, it just really, to me, I mean, th this is my own personal opinion here, uh, for my downstreamer soaping a house and then using the X-Jet, I seem to get a lot more foam action using that X-Jet. So it might be something if you guys haven't looked into, you might want to look into. Yep. Okay. Um, it's really open open mic now, guys, uh, open topic or whatever. If you all want to ask questions, general questions, we've – Reached the last slide there, and uh, Josh, I've got some pictures here. If you want me to bring some over, um, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. If anybody has any questions about how it was cleaned or whatever, <clears throat> yeah, I'll make these bigger. There's that one. I know. I think y'all get a delay from when things change on my screen. <laughs> y'all get them. So there's the before. And here's the after. Yeah, and, and this this is actually a, uh, an apartment complex. Um, I, I don't know if y'all would list it as residential or not, but I say if somebody lives in it, it's residential to me. So um, that every one of these pictures that, that he'll post up will use the exact same methods that we pretty much just went over. The and exact is that house one, mixture. Is that one stucco? That, that, this one is, yes. Okay. That this was actually uh, applied. Um, this one was actually done with with a X jet. Um, uh, this was actually one of the first places that I'd done with an X jet. Uh, that this was this was applied with the uh, the two gallons of a uh, you know twelve percent three gallons of water and uh, five ounces of um, fresh wash. Um, that this was a, a pretty simple wash. Uh, I didn't need any ladders and and all the work that I do. Um, I, I've never needed any ladders. I've always been able to reach it with uh, either the X-Jet or the downstreamer using uh, my longer wand. Like I said, I have one wand that's about five foot long, so I'm able to hit and cover pretty much everything. Uh, this, this dwell time was probably once I sprayed the whole side or half of it at once, I'm sorry, um, I let it sit for maybe three minutes and rinsed it off, and those were the results afterwards. Oh, great, great. And, and let me see. We've got a few questions here, Josh. Um, what part of Kansas are you in? Uh, it, I'm actually right outside of uh, Kansas City, Missouri. 
um, in a small town. They call it Knob Noster, but uh, it's probably an hour and 30 minutes outside of Kansas City and about 40 minutes from uh, Lee's Summit, if, if you know where that's at. But most of all, my work is done in Kansas City. Okay. Very good. And let me see. We have a comment that, of course, out in California, that's all you see is stucco. Mm -hmm. And 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 so, and sometimes and, and I'll add uh I I've done when I say a few I've probably done maybe 10 to 15 of them uh stucco wise but and and I've noticed sometimes when it gets a little heavier this one actually wasn't that bad I I've gone to a, a, a stucco house where I actually thought it was green when I showed up so uh you may have to hit it uh they have little crevices on stucco that pretty much kind of tries to hold that in and a good rinsing uh with with an adequate amount of uh, gallons per minute, you, you can definitely definitely clean it off uh, quite quite fast. I'm right on time wise. I can clean a 2,500 square foot, let's say vinyl siding house by myself in in under an hour. That's setting up, washing, and packing up. So as long as you soap right, you use the right mixtures, and you rinse properly, I mean you, you'll be in and out. Um, this house that you just posted up here. <clears throat> on that on that other house, Josh, do you uh -huh. have to clean the windows? Uh, n no, I, I don't offer any of that. I, I actually have a guy that does window washing that, uh, you know, I'll let them know if they want any professional type window washing. They should call this guy and stuff like that. But uh, pretty much just with the fresh wash and the SH, um, I just make sure I rinse them very well. And, and uh, one thing about fresh wash is uh, it helps not leave any streaks. I mean, that... That's my opinion. Uh, I've never had any spots or streaks on the window after using it. So I've actually had people ask me if I professionally clean their windows sometimes. So, and I just tell them no. Okay. And uh, um, we had a, a question regarding surfactant, but I'm not sure exactly what John's question is. Um, so if you'll 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 uh, send me that question, John, we'll we'll try to answer it regarding surfactant. And this this picture that you just put up was actually uh this was a house that I washed for a uh for a couple that uh their realtor actually told them that they should get it uh washed to uh, possibly sell it um <clears throat> this once again this one was actually done with a uh, downstream injector uh this is actually the before as you can tell there there's quite a bit of uh algae and uh mildew on the side of it um I didn't get a before and after of the backside, but the before and after of this of this house was just, I mean, it, it was unbelievable on the backside because the backside of it just looked horrible. Um, this was all done with a downstream injector. Uh, I pretty much sprayed it on and rinsed it off. I mean, that that fast. I sprayed it on, and by the time I walked to my truck and come back, uh, I I rinsed it off, and of course, you know, you can see the outcome right there. I done I done this coal house right here. This is about 1,700 square foot, uh, and that that one was done in probably about 40 minutes. So <clears throat> this this house right here, um, I took a picture just because the siding wasn't that bad, and the gutters weren't too terribly awful. Uh, I've seen worse, but uh, this this was the exactly same thing. Th this gutter uh, actually was whitened. Um, just using a soft wash method. I, I use no brush at all when doing this with the same house mixture that uh, that I've uh, mentioned before. There, okay. There's no streaks, there's no marks, there's no nothing on the side of this gutter. And uh, as you could tell, I mean, it, it, it wasn't too terribly bad, but it, it came out really well just with the uh, house wash mixture that I use. Good, good. We're running out of time. I don't know if this... Uh software shuts me off right in an hour or not, but we're still trying to answer questions. Um, question is, what would you charge, Josh, or if you want to discuss pricing, pricing if you're com comfortable for a 1,500 square foot uh, dwelling? Um, is is that 1,500 square foot house like vinyl siding or? Um, he, he didn't ask. He just he just said 1,500 it, square feet. It it really all it really all depends on what what the yes. siding uh, yes, itself siding. is. 
<clears throat> but uh, th this is the method that that I've gone by, and, and it's worked for me. I mean, you know, th this all depends on, you know, what you need to cover your overhead. Um, on houses, I, I have a rule that uh, if I charge about 18 cents a square foot, um, I normally come out on top every time. So you say 1,500 square foot uh, home, uh, vinyl siding, uh, one story, two story, I, I don't know. You're probably looking at 250 to 270. I didn't do any math on that, but it's about 250 to 270. And, and that also depends on how, how bad that vinyl siding is. If it's you know really caked on there, and I know I'm going to have to put maybe two coats, uh, it may be three hundred dollars. Right. Okay. And then um, let me see. We had a question. Let me. I'm trying to back up in the questions here. <clears throat> he asked every time I acid wash, my trigger gun gets ruined. It keeps leaking water through the tip when the trigger is released. I acid wash every weekend and have now gone to a ball valve. Does the acid ruin the gun? Um, I would try some different brand guns, Robert. Uh, we we do a lot of acid washing too, and I do notice that our, our our guns begin to leak after a while. I don't know if you'll completely avoid that, but I would. I'm scared to use ball valves because I, for safety reasons, I don't want to see our guys get hurt. Um, but that that's that's my question on that. I don't. Know if that you have really any technical knowledge on that, do you, Josh? No, I, I don't use any of that. Okay. And then uh, Robert wants to know if you missed Texas yet. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he's in it, no. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, and I think on the earlier dwelling with the stucco, we had a question if you used high pressure on that. Uh, n no. Um, I, it's all it's all low pressure. Um I mean, I wouldn't use, I mean, this is my personal opinion, um, I wouldn't use anything over uh, maybe two to 300 PSI. That's where I try to shoot at uh, when I consider, you know, low pressure wash. Anything under 300 uh, PSI is, is low pressure to me. Okay. Let me, I just shared those pictures up there for reference. We really don't need to get into those. Okay. And do you have the homeowner sign any kind of waiver for water? that may enter the house from bad windows, et cetera? Uh, actually, um, I, have a, uh, I have a form that, that I pretty much done myself. It just pretty much straight to the, for, uh, straight to the point uh, right on WordPad. It has my company up there, and it has comments. And when I walk around uh, with, with the customer, I have a clipboard, and I have my pad. And if I see any spots, because that, that's really what I'm looking for. I mean, the, the longer you get into it, I mean, I can look at the house at the size, and I can pretty much tell you what I'm going to charge for it. Um, but when I'm walking around, I'm pointing out the areas of concern to me, to the customer, and I'm going to let them know, hey, you know, there's a crack in that window, or that window is open. We need to we need to get it closed. That crack, you may leak water in there. And if he says, hey, that's fine, it's okay. I'll say, okay, these are the areas of concern that I've seen. If I could just get you to initial those. I, I've never had any problem with them initialing them, so that's just what I do. So yes, I would say I do have them sign some type of waiver, I guess you could say. Good, good. And next question is, uh, how would you recommend doing a wooden house, if at all? <clears throat> um, I, I actually, I don't have very much experience doing wooden homes. Um, I've done a few. Uh, I, I've done them with my my own house wash uh, with a little bit higher pressure. Um, from doing wood decks, I wouldn't go anything over 1,200 psi when doing wood. Um, that that that's my experience of doing wood decks. Now, as of wood houses, uh, like I said, I'm just not that experienced with doing that. Most of my stuff is uh, vinyl siding, and then I do a little stucco here and there, and then brick houses. So. Sure. Okay. Next question is, I use Joy soap in my mix. What's the difference, if any, of using a soap like Joy versus Simple Cherry or Fresh Wash? Josh, I don't know if, if you've got a lot of experience with that. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay. Um, I don't know a lot about what's in Joy, but from what I've been told, the, the surfactant that's in Joy actually works against the chlorine, so it, it, it'll weaken your mix. Um, but obviously, if you're putting it in five minutes before you're doing it, you're probably okay. 
But if you have any mix, because some guys mix up mixes and they keep them for several days, mm -hmm. so that'll that'll work against your chlorine and start to break down the strength of your chlorine. Uh, I don't think the sim I think the ch simple cherry is okay, but I'm not real sure. Uh, and obviously, when we we created the fresh wash, it was so that it would last a long long time with uh, chlorine and it wouldn't uh, break it down or make it uh, run away quicker. And then we had a uh, suggestion for the acid to use Viton seals in your gun. Uh, that that's correct, Lori Benjamin. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, I should have thought of that myself even. And then we've got. Let me see. Okay, um, lots of que or comments thanking us for doing it. And thought we did a great job. So appreciate what you've done, Josh, and for helping yeah, out here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hopefully, yeah, I was. <laughs> I was okay. This is the first one I've done, and, and like I said, I mean, I I tried to put as much information as possible. So I, I thank you guys for coming and, and watching. Yep. And and we uh, appreciate the recommendations on what to do for future webinars. Definitely. I had a couple. Uh, looks like we got one for doing roof washing and fleet washing. And um, the question was, how long will f for a fresh wash last? Um, Doug Rucker down in uh, Houston tested it when we first released it, and he said his solution lasted uh, up to 11 days. He was real, it, it weakened a little bit, we're still really I, happy. I can actually, I can I can confirm on that too, uh, Mike. I, I put up a, a solution, and then with the weather, like I told you, that uh, I got slow. I actually had five gallons sitting in t for two weeks, and then I was able to use it just as strong as before. And and let, let, let me tell you guys, the, the smell that Fresh Wash gives, like the lemon scent, it's it's amazing. I mean, it, it almost smells like lemonade, and I actually have customers comment on that. So that's just something yeah. that I'm extremely happy with. And that, that was one of the reasons we chose chose the lemon scent too, is because it's so strongly associated with cleanliness, and it's, it's using right. a lot of cleaning products. So people like that. And, and on the other hand, um, some people like the smell of uh, chlorine too. So it just depends on your customer. Yeah, I think <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yep. Yeah. All right, that, that looks like all the questions, and uh, everybody's had some great comments here. So, uh, or one last question. What temperature do you stop washing a home at? How cold? Um, I, I've washed home. I, now, I've seen some people uh, talk about that uh, their house wash mixture isn't working after, like, 50 degrees outside. But uh, I was washing up until about 40 degrees outside. Once it hit to... Uh, in the temperatures as low as 40 degrees, I'm sorry, uh, and then I stopped, and I didn't have any problem with mine. Maybe I just had a really good batch. Maybe some of these batches that other people's use maybe isn't as strong. I'm not real sure, but uh, I would say in between 40 to 50 degrees, anything less than that, I don't think your hands can handle it. <laughs> right. Well, I will tell you this, Josh. One of the things that we did when we uh, created the blend for Fresh Wash was hoping that it would go to lower temperatures, but since we had no tests, to really test it, and we haven't got a lot of feedback on it working in a lot of lower temperatures, so I'm glad you said that. Hopefully that, uh, yeah. that well, doesn't I, work. I, I, that if works. anybody hasn't seen it already, I, I actually froze some fresh wash, so I mean uh, it's there on the forums and people can check it out. It, it works extremely well even when it was frozen and, and came back, so right. I, and, I don't see a problem with it working in low temperatures at all. Good, and Judd, Judd West posted that he stops at 40 degrees. He doesn't get any okay. colder than that. And okay. as a closing note, this this was all educational. We we're trying to we we're talking about different products that people are asking about. We're obviously going to talk about the ones that we're most familiar with. Um, and I always want to say it at the end of what we're doing and what we're doing. I'm associated with PowerWash.com, but I'm not really doing this to promote our products. We just want to help educate people and and grow the PowerWash community. So, with that being said, any, anything in closing you want to say, Josh? You did a great job. Excellent. Uh, no no, I, I appreciate uh, allowing me to do this, and thanks, guys, for, for listening. Hopefully okay. I helped uh, somebody. And I appreciate everyone attending. Thank you, guys. All right, everyone thanks. have a great evening.
Oh.